For Zimbabweans who experienced them, the late 90s and early 2000s looked and sounded like this. Hey, I've gotta go, you know I love to stay. The ads were you to go out there and show them all the goodness you're made of. Telecommunications was on the rise. We are Zimbabwean fully independent. We get our instruction directly from our people and from nobody else. This was the politics of the day. There was the land issue to fix. The money. The following images are self-explanatory. But you note, it was positive Zimbabwe qualified for the AFCON for the first time in its history. Zimbabwe also hosted the Cricket World Cup, co-hosted with South Africa and Kenya. It was also during this time that Zimbabwean music experienced the rebirth, a renaissance for Zimbabwean urban music. Urban grooves exploded. There is no agreed upon definition for urban grooves. In her doctoral research, Doreen Tavinga gives a definition of urban grooves as being Whilst Tanai Chari in his article in Musica Journal of Music Research in Africa uses a simple definition to describe urban grooves as being Urban Grooves was Zimbabwean's tune in the late 90s and early 2000s. To truly understand Urban Grooves, there must be a deep dive into Zimbabwean music and history. Zimbabwe as an official country was born in 1980. So one could say that the music of Zimbabwe also only started in 1980. But that would be an injustice to the musicians of before who were the building blocks. The story starts in the 1930s when Zimbabwe was still Rhodesia and was still under British colonial rule. In the 1930s the Rhodesian government implemented the Land Act which would transform the country. What was the Land Act? The Land Apportionment Act of with the results the fix of these laws and the many laws implemented during this time deserve a deep dive on their own for this documentary I will bring three effects to your attention 
The settlers occupied a large chunk of Zimbabwe. This was mostly the productive land. Black Zimbabweans were left internally displaced by the Land Act, being forcibly moved to reserves. Reserves were overcrowded and consisted mostly unproductive land. This law drove the African population into a state of poverty. Most black Zimbabweans found themselves having to work as cheap labour on white owned farms. What does music have to do with all this? Because these were the factors that led to the formation of townships. And it is in the townships where Zimbabwean's modern music is born. Townships were created to house the black urban population and were an act of segregation or apartheid. And it is in townships that from boosted speakers, the black African artists were to hear music from America and be influenced by the sound to create their own. 